God bless you all in the name of the Lord Jesus. I am excited to be here with all of you. And, uh, and this is definitely the day the Lord has made. And it's, it's definitely an opportunity from God to be together with all of you. And um, I believe that every single thing that God allows to happen in our life is for a specific reason. And it's because God is trying to show forth his love for us. Now, um, I'm going to speak about angels today, and, and basically the purpose of, uh, of teaching this is because of the many questions that I've been getting. Yes. And uh, some of these questions, I've, I've answered them like in, uh, like healed, I think I spoke about it a little bit. Yeah. Uh, um, the title is very interesting, Who is Speaking to Me, An Angel or a Familiar Spirit? Mm. Now, I'm going to say certain things, and... I pray that you are honest in your heart when we even go in scripture. You see, there are two kinds of people that listen. There are those who listen and those who hear. The listener wants to understand. The hearer just wants to hear what they like. And that is a problem because that's where we misunderstand the word of God. That's the first thing. Spiritual things are very sensitive because they are a very thin line. And if you step the wrong way, you can find yourself in a terrible place. So it's not something you joke with. It's not something you play with. It's something to take very, very serious. If you look at the surrounding of the Ark of the Covenant, the children of Israel took it serious. God ordained certain people to approach the Ark and certain people not to approach it. And a young man was trying to help the ark when it was falling to save it. He touched it and he died because he wasn't ordained for them. Yes. Spiritual things are sensitive. Yes. I believe, number one, that what God did not give you, you shouldn't talk about it. Yes. When you have met the holy ones, and when I say holy ones, these are angels. This is another name of theirs in the scriptures. Holy ones, bright ones, sons of God, and so forth. If you have met holy ones, if you've been in their presence, it's actually insulting to compare their mandate to a familiar spirit. It's actually absurd. It's actually crazy to me. But here's the point, and we're going to go into scriptures. I will show you what angels do. I will show you what they cannot do. And you will make the conclusion... <laughs> And you will decide if a familiar spirit is the one that talks to me or it's an angel of God. So we are going to go now. We're going to go now into who angels are. How old they are. Let's start by how old they are. <laughs> That's a good one. Let's start by how old they are. Hallelujah. 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 The reason why I want you to know these things is not, it's not to vindicate myself. I don't care about that. You know, um, the reason why I don't care about that is because what God has given me is working by itself. Yes. People are coming from all over to receive from God. Yeah. So for me, it's not really to vindicate myself because God has given me people to minister to. But the reason why I'm sharing this with you is that, number one, I don't want you to miss what God has ordained for you. And to be spiritually ignorant of certain things will remove you from receiving certain things that God would want to give you. And then number three, so that you can know the God you serve. So that you can stop calling people that are real false and those who are false call them real. You need to know. Because if you don't know, you will perish because of lack of knowledge. It's true. Right? Yes. Okay, let's look at this. That's why I told you I came to learn today. Ah, uh, no, no, no. Don't say that. Um, Job chapter 38. From verse 1 to 7. Job 38 from verse 1 to 7. Job chapter 38, mm -hmm. verse 1. Mm -hmm. 
Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind mm -hmm. and said, Who is wait, this? Wait, 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 wait. Read slowly. Uh huh. Yes, sir. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind. Now, now let me just show you how we know little. Okay? Other people are having encounters with God in a whirlwind. Other people are not finding God in a whirlwind. An example is Elijah is <laughs> hiding in a cave. There's a fire. God was not in a fire. There was an earthquake. God was not in an earthquake. There was a rushing wind or a whirlwind. God was not in the wind. Then there was a still small voice and God was in the voice. Right? But here you're reading Job, whose book is older than every book in your Bible. Mm. The book of Job is the oldest book in this Bible we have. The book of, Jesus, uh, the book of um, Genesis holds the oldest account. Mm. But the book of Job is the oldest book mm. in terms of age. But Genesis holds the oldest account. Why? Because we know that Moses is the one who wrote Genesis, the first five books, I believe. But Job, his book was written, Job is not even considered a Jew, but he was among these books. Mm. You see how spiritual people are? They yeah. don't say, you are from us, you are from them. They don't think like that. They can identify God. Mm. So here is Job speaking to God in a whirlwind, yet Elijah never found God in a whirlwind. So what if Elijah said, I, if you meet God in a whirlwind, it's not God. He only speaks through a still small voice. Then God comes to you in a whirlwind and you say that's a demon. You just missed God. You, missed God. you see why it's dangerous to make doctrines out of things you don't know. Yeah. What we should learn is to discern God's voice, to know his ways, to know his spirit. That way we can know who he is. Not because of the means in which he came to you. Yeah. If you're married to the means, ooh. God will disappoint you. God will 100% disappoint you. Mm. Now, 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 keep reading. Listen to this. Listen to this. Uh -huh. Then the Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind uh -huh. and said, mm -hmm. Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Uh-huh. Gird up now thy loins like a man, for mm -hmm. I will demand of thee, and answer thou me. Mm -hmm. Where wast thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? Mm -hmm. Declare if thou hast understanding. Mm -hmm. Who hath laid the measures thereof, mm -hmm. if thou knowest? Mm -hmm. Or who hath stretched the line upon it? Mm -hmm. Whereupon the foundations thereof fastened? Mm -hmm. Or who laid the cornerstone thereof? Mm -hmm. When the morning stars sang together, and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Read number seven again. When the morning stars sang together, mm -hmm. and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Notice, we know how old the angels are, because the angels were present when God was creating the earth. Genesis yeah. chapter one, when you're reading verse one, and God said, let there be this, let there be that. Angels were celebrating way before, way before the earth was covered in water. They were present when the original earth was created before even the waters were moved into place. They were there when the foundations of the earth were set. They saw the measures of it. They were there. The Bible is telling you, were you there when the morning stars were singing together and the sons of God were shouting with joy? Now, these are two rankings of angels you just got revelation of. Who are the sons of the morning? If you know. If you read, I, I think, Ezekiel, or Isaiah, it says, Lucifer, son of the morning. Now, morning, now remember, morning stars and son of the morning is the same statement. It's identifying a certain group of angels. This is talking about cherubims. It's saying, were you there when cherubims were singing together? And the word sons of God, the word God there is Elohim. Elohim. This is the same word you see when you read Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, Elohim. And the word Elohim is the plurality of God. God. Wow. 
the plurality, the, the omniscience, the, the omnipresence, his, uh, the expanse of his power and his knowledge. Wow. It's speaking of his, of his nature. Wow. 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 Are you understanding? Yes, sir. He calls him Elohim. Mm -hmm. Now, when you read it in original translation, the word Elohim is used in context mm. to understand whether it is referring to man or to angels. Like, angels. Mm. like an example is, who is man that you visit him? Have you have made him a little lower than Elohim. That's what it says. But if you read in context, you understand that the word Elohim there is angels. Yes. You have made him a little lower than angels. Yes. That's what he says, yes. right? Wow. And I will show you how the placement of angels and men shifted. Mm. You will also learn that if we have in, enough time. Angels were present when the earth was being created. Before verse where you see the earth was, uh, was dark and water was covering it, you have to understand there was an event that happened. Many... Um, Many scholars call it the, the, the gap period between verse 1 and verse 2. Yeah. When the earth is without form, covered with water, because it was never created like that. There, was, uh, there, were, there were things going on on earth before the flood covered the earth. And then God recreates it and reshapes it and then calls forth animals. And then Adam is made and so forth. The angels were present watching the earth being formed. Mm. But we know that in the pattern of God, the way God creates, we know that it was impossible for the angels to be created before heaven because God always creates your habitation and what you need to survive, then he creates you in that environment. Wow. So heaven, that heavenly beings belong to their realm or their world because they were formed from that substance. Wow. That is why I believe in Hebrews or one of them says that their earthly bodies and their celestial bodies, notice celestial, not celestial. It, it's in plural. Mm. Their celestial bodies, bodies. meaning they're different. Mm. All angels are not made equally, nor are they the same. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Mm. I'm giving you a little background so that you understand. Wow. So angelic beings are very knowledgeable about the earth okay. because they were present when it was when being it was created. created. Yes. So let's say the earth is 7,000 years. Mm -hmm. This is a, I'm not saying the earth is 7,000 years. But let's say the earth is 7,000 years. Mm -hmm. You have to add time that we cannot calculate yeah. because these guys come from the everlasting realm, not the eternal realm. Only okay. God is eternal. Okay. Anything that has a beginning is not eternal. It's everlasting. Meaning that it continues, it continues from the day it was made. And it has no end because it's everlasting. Lasting. But God is eternal. He has no beginning and he has, and no, he has end. no end. And we received eternal life. Because we were created, what does it say? For those he foreknew, he also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son. God desires for us men to have the same relationship he has with his son, Jesus. Mm. And we cannot mm. have that relationship with only everlasting life. Mm. We need eternal life for life. us to know him more intimately than any other creature he has ever created. Wow. Oh, that was a part to shout amen. Because remember, the wow. deep calleth unto what? Unto deep. The deep. So there are things Michael, the, 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 the chief angel or the prince of heaven knows mm. that when we enter glory, we will know more than him because of eternal life. Wow. The life of God himself resides in us. Wow. You see, if the devil had eternal life, he would, not be, he, he will, he will be indestructible. Mm. It's called eternal. How is God going to destroy him? Yeah. Wow. 
Are you understanding? Yes. So the devil could not have eternal life. Because if you have eternal life, then there's a full stop. If, if you don't have eternal life, then your life can have a full stop. A full stop yeah. But if you have eternal life, you cannot have a full stop. Is this making sense? Yes. yes. So the word Elohim means judges or rulers, divine beings okay. or angels. That is the primary meaning of it. The only time it means God is in context of what is being said. Because Elohim also means gods in plural. But when it speaks of him singularly, but he calls his name Elohim. It's talking about his ability being omniscient, omnipotent, and all these amazing things. Is this making sense so far? Yes, sir. That's deep. I'm just going to help you by the grace of God. Using your own Bible, you will see what I'm telling you. So that you can comprehend the things of the Spirit. So that you don't fall into depriving yourself. You see, once you have Jesus, you have Jesus. Amen. I always say, I'd rather make it to heaven, receiving everything that God has for me, mm. than making it to heaven and realizing that, man, I could have had so much more with God on earth and I missed it. Is this knowledge necessary for salvation? Absolutely not. But is it... Necessary for living a thriving Christian life? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Is this making sense? Yes. yes, sir. Now, the primary job description of angels, their primary, primary job description. Now, remember, God does not have Michael because God needs protection. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. The Lord, our God, is called the God of heaven's armies. Right. Why does God need an army? Does God need protection? Number one, there is no other God except him. Right. Does God need to be protected? He doesn't need protection. So why did he create these beings that their duty is to defend? But they have no work in heaven. Because who are they going to protect in heaven? The Bible says in heaven there is no rust, there's no thieves, there's nothing like that. So what is their purpose? Wow. That is deep. Hmm. That is deep. What is their purpose? We're going to go into it in a second and then I will tell you what they do. The number one primary function of them, the word angel in Hebrew is malak. Okay. And malak means messenger. So how can somebody be called Okay, his name can be the post office. What do you call the post office? The mailman. The mailman. But he doesn't deliver mail. <laughs> uh, you, you didn't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> How can somebody call, be called the mailman? Now remember the God that created these beings. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. Mm. He's omnipotent. He's everywhere at the same time. Mm. So he doesn't need anyone to deliver anything for him, for him or to speak on his behalf. But God still created people to represent him, <laughs> to deliver something for him. So if you are ignorant of that, why is God deeming them important? I want you to understand this. I want us to use logic. A Christian should always think logically, but also spiritually. Amen. There's nothing wrong with logical thinking. When people say you don't need to think, in about, think about it logically, that's not true. The word of God is logical. You can yeah. think. Yeah. 
yeah. normally. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, the more you can think, the better. So think about it. God has a mailman. It is in their name. Mailman. But he doesn't deliver any mail. He doesn't engage with the name. Remember, every name that God gives something, that's its function. Right. Yeah. Now, we are not even going into angels interacting with us yet. Because I've seen people saying, commenting on things, ah, you have familiar spirit, you don't receive words from, from angels. I, sh I promise you, I will show you even more. Yes. More that some of you don't even know where it came from. Yeah. You will understand why God created these beings. Now remember, for God, this is, this is my own understanding. God likes to reveal himself to his beings, mm -hmm. whether it's human beings or whatever he creates. He reveals himself. Yeah. If you remember the donkey with Balaam, he knew who God was. When God gave him the ability to speak, he said, man, why are you striking me? I've always been good to you. Can't you see I'm trying to save you from the angel that is before you trying to kill you? Notice the Bible does not say that God put words into the donkey. The Bible says God gave the donkey the ability to speak. So it means animals are aware of God. Yeah. Uh, I, I feel like I'm talking to myself. It's true. They are aware of God. They just don't have the ability to speak. Yeah. It's not been given them. Let's look at this quickly. I want to read the whole chapter, so have mercy on me. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 14. Who's going to read on this side? Closer on this side. Anyone with a mic on this side? Hebrews chapter 1 verse 1 to 14. Apostle, you can read for me if you have it. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 14. Let's see if I get it. Are you ready, Apostle? Yes, Please sir. read. God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets. Now, remember, he's saying God in the past spoke various ways, not one way, yes. various ways to our fathers and the, prophets. and the prophets. Now, we will look at how he spoke to the prophets. Okay? Then he goes on to say, Has in these last days spoken to us by his son, and in these last days, he has spoken to us by his what? His, his son. son uh -huh. Whom he has appointed heir of all things. Uh -huh. Through whom also he made the world. Stop right there, Apostle. Mm -hmm. So in now modern times, God speaks to us through his son. son. Now, you tell me, did Jesus come and, and tell you, give your life to me? But still God is speaking through his son. Yeah. Uh, you didn't understand what I'm saying. Very few people have had encounters with the Lord through visions, through dreams, some people physically. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes. So he's saying in modern times, God is speaking to us through his son. And people say, we don't need any prophets because God has spoken to us through his son. But after his son left, the apostles were speaking. Yeah. So what does it mean God has spoken to us through his son? He's saying, who has delivered the message? In the beginning was the Father, or we can say God, delivering his message to his prophets. And then God manifested in the flesh so that we can know him, behold his glory, so that we can be more intimate with him. Yeah. So that now we will speak the message of the Lord, which is what? Grace, Grace. mercy, salvation, reconciliation unto God. Yeah. And also repentance, mm. right? Yeah. So understand the context. Keep going, Apostle. Whom he has appointed her to of all things, mm -hmm. through whom also he made the worlds, mm -hmm. who being the brightness of his glory mm -hmm. and the express image of his person, mm -hmm. and upholding all things by the word of his power, mm -hmm. whom he had by himself mm -hmm. purged our sins, mm -hmm. sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, mm -hmm 
having become so much better than the angels. Wait. Why are angels being mentioned? <laughs> this is talking to us about how God spoke to us. Yeah. And how in modern times he's speaking to us through his son. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit is not being mentioned. <laughs> all of a sudden, he's being compared to yeah. angels. Yeah. Why are angels being plugged into this story? Why are they being plugged into this passage? Mm. Read that verse again, Apostle. Um, it says, He had by himself purged out sin, mm -hmm. sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, mm -hmm. having become so much better than the angels, uh -huh. as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Notice this. He's still comparing him to angels. Because of what he went through, he is better than the angels because he has obtained a better, a name, better name than them. An excellent name. An yeah. excellent name than them. Yes. Now remember, it is speaking about the Lord Jesus in his humanity. Mm -hmm. It's speaking about the Lord Jesus in his humanity. Yeah. Why is it comparing him to angels? Number one, because angels have always been the in-between people between us and God. God. Remember their name. Malak means messenger. Mm -hmm. Meaning whenever God wanted to communicate and whenever God wants to communicate, he will communicate through what? His angels. And some people say, ah, but this and this. No, the Holy Spirit was always there. Who did Moses meet on the mountain? Mm. We'll get to that in a second. Yeah. I will surprise you. I will surprise you and you will be shocked. So you imagine he has obtained a better name and he has become better. Meaning there is a point. Man was not better than angels. Are you hearing me? Notice we are comparing better, not worse. All these are good. Proximity of angels was better because of sin. And when God created Adam, he never called Adam my son. Mm -hmm. Adam was his creation. Mm -hmm. Through the Lord Jesus, we have been called sons. So because of that, we are better than them. Yeah. That we even have been told in scripture, don't you know that you will judge angels? Yeah. Meaning at a certain time, men did not know that that would even be possible. Yeah. And the judging meaning that we can tell them what to do or some. The judging there is not punished because angels don't sin. We are going somewhere. Yeah. Keep reading. For to which of the angels did he ever say, you are my son? Today I have begotten you. Mm -hmm. And again, I will be to him a father and he shall be to me a son. Mm -hmm. But when he again brings the firstborn into the world, mm -hmm. he says, let all the angels of God worship him. Mm -hmm. And of the angels, he says, who makes his angels, spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire. Notice there, there's a comparison between man, angels, angels, man, man, yeah. angel, the Lord, where he's ranking. Notice, because God made Christ, or the God-man, God himself reincarnating into the flesh, he named him son, and through him we received sonship also. Yes. Through that, we have become better than what? Angels. Angels. Because God can look at me and say, my son, Lovi. He yeah. can look at her and say, my daughter. He can look at him and say, my son. He can look at that and say, my child. God has never called angels children. children. So by just virtue of relationship, by that grace of becoming his, yeah. we are already better because... Him being dad, it means we already have access to mysteries and secrets that they don't even have. Okay, some, somebody asked a question. This is a genuine question. If angels don't sin, what is Job? You misunderstood me. Me saying angels don't sin. Remember, 
I am not talking about them not having the inability to sin. The word angel means pure messengers. When they fall, they are no longer called angels. They are called devils or demons. The ones that left their place sinned. But I'm speaking about those who are in heaven. They don't sin. I did not say they are not able to sin. Yeah. They don't. That is why they are called the holy angels. Holy angels. I hope that makes sense. Yes. So I'm not saying they don't have the ability to. That's a whole mystery by itself. Because God being love, he must give everything free will. Without love, you know, if there's no love, then there is no will. Yeah. So God being loving, you have to be able to choose. Because that is the evidence of love. They don't sin, meaning they don't engage with sin. But I didn't say they don't have the ability to. I can't say that. But knowing scripture and seeing what happens even in Revelation, we know that they will never do it again. Yeah. They learned from looking at Lucifer. Yes. They do have free will. I can even prove it to you in scripture. Okay, keep reading, Apostle. But to the son, he says, your throne, O God, is forever and mm -hmm. ever. Mm -hmm. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of your kingdom. Uh -huh. You have loved righteousness mm -hmm. and hated lawlessness. Mm -hmm. Therefore, God, your God, has anointed you uh -huh. with the oil of gladness uh -huh. more than your companions. Uh -huh. And you, Lord, in the beginning, laid the foundations of the earth. Uh -huh. And the heavens are the works of your hands. Uh -huh. They will perish, but you remain. Uh -huh. And they will all grow old like a garment. Mm -hmm. Like a cloak, you will fold them up, mm -hmm. and they will be changed. Mm -hmm. But you are the same, mm -hmm. and your years will not fail. Uh -huh. But to which of the angels has he ever said, mm -hmm. Sit at my right hand till I make your enemies your footstool? Remember, you are seated with Christ in heavenly places. Yes. Amen. So you are sitting with Jesus, but angels don't even sit next to God. Yes. Are you getting? Yes. Keep, keep going. And they, not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister. Notice, notice that. Read that again. Are they not? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for those who will inherit salvation? Its salvation? Mm -hmm. Now, notice that. Are they not all ministering spirits sent to minister? And this is 14, those, right? Yes. To those who will inherit salvation. Yes. So angels are created to minister to you. What does it mean to minister to you? To help, to you, help you, to aid you in what God has given you to do. Yes. So to be ignorant of the angelic is to be ignorant of the help you have. Yes. For your ministry. I don't know if somebody is catching this. Yes, yes. That is powerful. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes. To be ignorant of angels. And notice he said spirits. Why did it call them spirits? Because there are many different kinds. Are you hearing me? Yes. Different kinds. Seraphims are not cherubims. Cherubims are not eons. Eons are not thrones. Thrones are not uh, uh, rulers of light. Mm. Rulers of light are not principalities. Principalities are not powers. powers. They are all different. Wow. All of them are different. They are not the same. So all of them were created for one purpose, to minister to us. Mm. Based on our assignment, it will determine what kind of angels God graces us to walk with. Wow. That is and our awareness of them is also by grace based on what God has called us to do. Are you hearing me? Based on our assignment, like an example, somebody who is called to be a banker, to help people in the banking system, has no use of seeing angels. Okay. What's the point? Yeah. But somebody called prophetically mm. to know certain hidden mysteries yes. may need to see what is invisible. Yes. Yes. May need to be instructed differently. 
Or somebody will ask me, what is the place of the Holy Spirit and angels? We will get to all that. Mm. But first, I want you to understand that angels are ministering spirits. spirits. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He's upon you. He's around you. If you have him. But that doesn't stop the work of angels. It doesn't. Mm. Mm. If you look at the Lord Jesus' own ministry, and I will show you and you'll be surprised how intimately his ministry was with the angelic yeah, realm. With angelic Strangely, you'll be shocked. So the number one key is to understand angels' duty is to serve you. But their primary job description is in their name. But we'll go deeper into the messaging part in a second. That's powerful, uh, Papa. So mm -hmm. as long as you've inherited salvation, mm -hmm. the angels are at your disposal. A hundred percent. But you don't know that. But you see, what you don't know also you cannot work with. Yes. You can't. Are you getting? You can't use, you can't be, you, you, right now, you are a better Christian than you used to be. Because you know more. Amen. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to show you something. Hmm. Hmm. Now, I want to show you something very, very cool. I want you to look at this. Hmm, let me see what scripture I'm going to pick here. And this is going to help you. I want you to look at... Um, I want you to look at this. Because all in, all in. I had to write scriptures because this I'm teaching. This is not my way to teach, but I have to do it in order to be of help to you. I don't want you to miss anything. Yeah. Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Matthew chapter 4, verse 11. Amen. Guys, don't ask questions how many angels can be assigned to you, what are angel numbers. Just <laughs> listen first and learn, and then we can do question and answer at the end. If there's any validity to your question, I will answer it. And if I don't know, I will tell you I don't know. Now, let's start from verse 10, please, Apostle. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then Jesus said to him, mm -hmm. Away with you, Satan, uh -huh. for it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only mm -hmm. shall, uh, you shall serve. Mm -hmm. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered to him. Oh, before Jesus started ministry, yeah. he went through a test. What was one of the temptations that the enemy tested him with? It was Psalm 91. Mm. He told him, throw yourself off this building. Is it not written, he will give his angels charge over thee to keep you in all your ways. They will hold you up with their arms that you will not even dash your foot against the rock. So why would the devil deem it important to tempt Jesus, to tempt him, if he believes in the ministry of angels? No, 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 don't clap yet. I want you to think about it. Why is he thinking it is important for Jesus to be aware of angels? What for? If angels were not important, it will not be one of the temptations. The number one temptation, he tried him with bread to see if he depends on the word of God. The second temptation, he tempted him with the pleasures of the world. If he will escape death. I will give you all this. You don't have to go through the cross and you can just, you know, we can just hush hush this thing. If you worship me. The third one, because Jesus, sorry, because the Lord Jesus resisted the spiritual one to do with God. The second one to do with the pleasures of this world and shortcuts. The third one was to do with his ministry. He said, let's see if angels are really with you. Because is it not written? They will protect you. They will keep you. He has given them charge. Do you know what to be charged is? They have been commanded. To ensure that they stay on their task. They stay on their task concerning you. 
to keep you in all your ways. Now, notice this. What does it mean to keep? To keep you in all your ways. This is not just speaking of protection. This is speaking of more than protection. In certain things you would want to do, they will nudge you the other way. To keep you from disappointment, to keep you from failure. They are supposed to keep you from all this. Notice, the Holy Spirit leads you. Leads you, meaning he's ahead of you. But angels are besides you. Two different things. The Spirit of God leads you, meaning he's ahead of you. Yeah. Those who are led by the Spirit. Yeah. But there are certain things God is not going to do because, you, please understand this. Right now, if I say that I am under America's protection, right? Mm-hmm. Let's say I was sent into a certain country mm-hmm. and I, I am under, under President Biden's protection, yeah. right? The president comes out and announces and he says, no, I'm going to have the secret service and the marines to protect you. Yeah. When I give my speech after the whole wahala ends, I'll say I would like to thank the president for protecting me. Protecting me. That's right. Wait, the president wasn't the one protecting me. His angels were protecting me, but yeah. guess whose angels they are? His yeah. angels. Yeah. So I say, God, I thank you for the protection. Not because when I said, Father, protect me, God left heaven and stood at my door waiting for the enemy to come. His angels were representatives of that protection by the Holy Spirit. Are are you getting what I'm trying to say? God delivered the children of Israel. An angel was leading them. The angel of the Lord was leading them by a cloud. Right? Right? But if you read, the Lord said, and, and by the, the blow of his nostril, he parted the sea mm-hmm. and covered the children of, of the Egyptians and delivered the children of Israel by a mighty hand. It was the Lord through his angel. The Lord wasn't present. Yeah. His spirit was present, yeah. but his angels were carrying yeah. out their assignment. Yeah. assignment. When the Lord told, told uh, Moses, I will descend into Egypt... Mm. And I would judge the Egyptians today. I would teach them a lesson. I will walk through Egypt. And when I see the blood, I will pass over your house. Yeah. Isn't that what the Bible says? That's yeah. why the Jew- children of Israel celebrate the Passover. Yeah. I will pass over your house. Yeah. Guess what? When you read, what does it say? The angel of death. A destroyer came into Egypt. And killed all the firstborns of the Egypt. It wasn't God. It was God because he's omnipresent. But he visited and judged judged the Egyptians by his angels. If you go to the book of Revelation, every wrath that God will pour on the last days, guess who's doing it? Angels pouring bowls of his wrath on the earth. Not God coming down hitting people. (laughs) These are in your Bible, people. Unless your eyes are open to see it, you won't see but it. But you see, the problem is, if it is not given to you to know, these things are known according to assignment. Yes. Yes. There are certain things, even if I pray and say, Lord, I thank you for your protection. I thank you that, Lord, you have put a edge of protection around me. I thank you that, Lord, you are with me everywhere I am. You know my coming in and going out. You are everywhere with me. Yes, he is because he's omnipresent. But yes. guess what? His angels are the ones keeping you in all your ways. The angel of the Lord encompass them that fear him. When the Bible says that there was an edge of protection around mm-hmm. Job mm-hmm. and his family, it was an angel that was keeping him. Yes. God always protects us by his angels. Yeah. That, that's, that's scripture, people. Yeah. It doesn't say, I will put my blood around you and witches mm-hmm. will not pass. It says, my angels. angels. Hmm. Are are you getting what I'm saying? But you see, when we don't understand these things, we will fight people who are saying certain things just because it's... You see, let me just say this. 
just because you don't understand it doesn't mean it's fake. It doesn't mean it's false. It doesn't mean it's witchcraft. I just saw Apostle Daniel Adams. I love you, my brother. God bless you. One of my favorite men of God. Are you hearing me? Yes. Just because it was not given to you, you don't understand it, doesn't make it false. It's very ignorant to speak like that. Yeah. And to try and find scriptures to justify these things, it's crazy to me. A hundredfold crazy. A hundredfold crazy to me. Just because mm. I don't understand something, I should be... It's called bearing false witness. I don't yeah. know it. I've never experienced it. Why am I talking about it? Yeah. It's true. You see, this is the problem of, of, of bandwagons. Yeah. Remember when they cut my video, making it seem that I'm saying sex before marriage is good, it's not yeah. a sin? Yeah. A lot of people jumped on it and commented. Yeah. Now you hear them quiet. Because they know what is coming. And because I put them on blast, I played the whole... That is the kind of generation we are living in. Yeah. I will never judge anyone by a short clip, because I know that what you see, deception and lies is much easier in this time because people are quick in digesting things. Yeah. Everything quick yeah. is good. The same people have videos of them cut six seconds, two seconds, five seconds, 60 seconds. I know better. Have you ever heard me call any of them a false man of God? Have you, I've spoken that they're, they're ignorant, they're yeah. foolish. Yeah. I've pointed out foolishness, yeah. but I will never say that they are not men or women of God. No, you can serve God and still be ignorant in certain areas. Yeah. There are things I used to be ignorant of. Yes, I'm sure there are, other th and yeah. there, are, there are things I'm sure I didn't know, and I yeah. grew from. And you grew, yeah. And there are things I'm sure I still don't know that God, by his grace, he will also raise me. Yeah, exactly. I'll be a fool to say I know everything. It's craziness yeah. to me. Yeah. It's crazy because just because I don't know something, I will be crazy to say this is how it is. That's how it is. Yeah. Let's not be like that because we are going to kill our own credibility before the people of God. Yes. yes. It's true. It's crazy. Mm. So now look, read Luke chapter 4 verse 1. Many people missed that part. And angels came and ministered to him. Meaning there was a certain level that the Lord Jesus entered to. After the temptation. Because when he was tempted, he was by himself. Yeah. He was led to be tested. His flesh, his humanity was being tested. Mm. And he overcame. When he overcame, a new door was opened to him. Okay, Apostle, read it. Read it. Luke chapter 4 from verse 1. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, uh -huh. returned from the Jordan. Wait, 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 wait. Matthew doesn't tell us Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm. He says the devil departed from him. Yes. And angels came and attended to him. Yeah. We know Jesus was filled by the Holy Spirit at the Jordan. At the Jordan. Mm. Mm. When he went to the Jordan, the Spirit of the Lord descended, descended on him. Upon him. And God declared, this is my beloved son, yeah. in whom I am well pleased. And immediately he was led into the wilderness to be yeah. tempted of the devil. Tempted. After the Lord was tempted of the devil, you, don't, you hear that the devil departed from him until another time and the angels of God came and attended to him. Yeah. That's what ministering means. It means yeah. to attend to him. Yeah. They attended to him. Mm -hmm. Then you go to the next chapter. You go to Luke 4. 1. It says, Jesus, Jesus being, being full of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit. Yeah. If you read it in King James, it says, Jesus being full of of the power of the Spirit. Can you read it in King James, please? Full of the power of the Spirit. Not filled. That's why some translations are tricky. Because Jesus is already filled. Can you read it in King James, please? Man of God. And Jesus being full of the Holy Ghost returned from Jordan. Uh, is that King James? Uh -huh. Read it again. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, uh -huh. returned from Jordan mm -hmm. and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Being no, no, no. Luke chapter 4, verse 1. Yeah. Oh, did I read the wrong place? Okay, sorry. 
Oh, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm in the wrong place. What, what was it? It's uh, the end, right? Verse fourteen. Verse fourteen. Please 14. read verse fourteen. Okay. I'm sorry, Apostle was right. I read wrong. Uh, fourteen. Uh, read for verse fourteen. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into oh. Galilee. And Jesus returned in, in the, the power, power of, of the, the Spirit. spirit when Jesus was led into the wilderness, he was led full of the Spirit. Jesus going to the Jordan is full of the Holy Spirit. He was led into the wilderness. Mm -hmm. Jesus coming out of the wilderness. What does he say? He was full of the power, power of, of the, the Spirit. spirit. To he returned with the power. Mm -hmm. But the only interaction we see him with the divine is angels coming to him. Now, you will understand why Jesus said a certain statement. He said this. You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. He didn't say you will be powerful when the Holy Spirit comes. Some of you missed that. Yes. Pay attention. You shall, you shall, meaning it's a promise. It will come after. It did not say they will come together. Uh, Apostle, I think I just stepped on some toes. <laughs> Can you find it for me, man of God, in the back before? Now, you, let's read from 13. Luke chapter 4 from verse 13 to 14. From 13. Mm. Now when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Uh -huh. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee. In the power. You see, until you overcome the flesh, there are certain dimensions of power you will never walk in. Hello. Hello. You even see the Lord Jesus threatening this before he goes on the cross. He said, you don't think I can ask my father for 12 legions of Legion. angels yeah. and no one will take me. No one will put me on the cross. Yeah. Wait, what? Can you pull back? There's a scripture somebody put. I want to see in the comments. I don't have my glasses, but I'm a little bit. I have to see. Go, go back. Go back. I thought I saw something. Keep going, keep going. Not that one. Keep. Okay, there we go. I'll stop right there. Look, uh, read that. In all that, this is it Obadiah. Says, is it Obadiah? Isaiah or what? Obadiah. Obadiah. <coughs> Can you read it? Uh, uh, somebody get that scripture. Obadiah 63, oh, yeah. verse 9. Correction. Obadiah 63. Uh -huh. Is it Isaiah? Old Isaiah or Isaiah? Uh, my eyes, I can't see. Isaiah 63, Isaiah 63 verse 9. Verse 9. Uh -huh. I, was like, I don't know if there's a book, but I read. <laughs> uh -huh. Verse 1. Okay, listen. Verse nine. Isaiah, verse Isaiah verse nine. 63, verse 9. Verse 9. Uh huh. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bare them and cared them all the days of old. <laughs> the presence of God was there, but there was an angel also who was with them. Yeah. That's, that's a beautiful scripture. Thank you for the one that posted that. I see people are beginning to be opened up. We can return to the comments where they were. All right, let's continue. And when the devil had ended all his temptation, he departed from him for a season. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the regions round about. Why was there fame? There was something supernatural that started happening. There was an angelic surrounding around him. To make his work easy. To win more people. Unto himself. 
You see, when people look at our ministry, they don't understand why people are coming and people keep coming, people keep coming. I am not a brilliant person. I don't boast to be intelligent. I don't boast to be the most eloquent or the best spoken person. My English is not the greatest. French, I'm amazing. Uh, Lingala, I'm amazing. Swahili, I'm amazing. English is not really my language. My English is like my fourth language. My first one was French. Second was Lingala. Third was Swahili. And fourth was English. English is my later language. I'm not the greatest at it. But there is something being communicated. And there is something that is carrying the name of this place and what God is doing in this house. That is why people are attracted. How many people have come to church and say, Ah, you are with me in a bar in Atlanta. Yeah. I'm like, me in Atlanta? Yes. <laughs> and you told me that in a few years, I should come and look for you in LA and you will see me and, and, you will, and I will know you because of how your name will be known and how you are a prophet and how you are helping a lot of people and you are with people there. You are not drinking, but you're talking to me and then you left. And then I was very confused. And then years later, here I am watching you on YouTube and I saw you and I told my friend, this is the same person that was with me in the bar that spoke to me then disappeared. I wasn't there. I have never drunk in my life. Yeah. Ever. I don't even I think if you even give me a drop of wine I'll be drunk. I wasn't there. Remember there was a, a, a family, a husband was in church and his wife was in Mexico. And his wife was diagnosed with stage 4 cancer. And the doctors had given her chemo and chemo and chemo and chemo and there was no hope for her. Well, the husband came to church holding the, the picture, and I speak to him, I said, don't worry, your wife will be well. He calls the wife, the wife said, you won't believe. Prophet Lovi was just here in my house, he just came to the house. And he told me, don't be afraid, go to the hospital, they will not find it anymore. They will take you out of this and this and this and this. And I couldn't believe, and I thought she was joking, but my daughter confirmed it because she was there or something like that. Is it me? No. Are you getting what I'm trying to tell you? Their duty is to make sure the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ is pushed. Whoever is being used to win souls, their job is to assist him. So the priests could not understand the fame of this. The Bible literally tell you, tells you fame of him went abroad. People started knowing about him. How? There was something supernatural. There are so many people healing people. There are so many prophets that are probably better than me. There are so many people delivering people better than me. But why is it that somehow, I'm not saying I'm the most popular by any stretch. There are great men of God that are known way more than me. But why is it that thousands of people line out of this church every week, every week, to just coming twice a week, to just be in the presence of God, to receive of God? What Do you think it's normal? There is something supernatural. Yeah. So the devil tempted him so that he doesn't enter into this place. Thank you, Apostle. I received that prophecy. Apostle Daniel, my favorite apostle. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Notice this. Let me give you an example before you go into other things. Apostle said, said it well. Favor with God is favor with man. That's true. Yeah. Somebody said TB Joshua 2.0. That's a whole other story and it is true. <laughs> oh, watch this. Elisha, he's surrounded by the enemy. His servant, his son, comes and knocks and says, my Lord, you won't believe. We are in danger. We are going to die today. We are surrounded in all this. Elisha gets up and says, Lord, open his eyes to see. And when his eyes were opened, he realized that there was innumerable numbers of angels. Innumerable number of angels around the prophet. Then the prophet walks to the enemies and says, 
before he gets to them, he blinds them. He says, Father, let, their, let them not see. <laughs> then he gets to them and says, uh, who are you guys looking for? They said, uh, we are looking for Elisha. He said, come, I will show you where he is. How do you think he blinded them? There's a certain level of power he walked with. Somebody will say, well, angels can't do that. That's not true. You don't understand these angelic beings. Zachariah is in the temple. Angel Gabriel appears to him, tells him about his wife having a son, what the son's life will be. And the man of God, the priest of God, doubted the angel of God. And the angel became angry. How do you know he became angry? He said this, I am Gabriel, who stands in the presence of God. Because you have doubted me, you will not speak until that child is born. He did not say, this is what the Lord said. The Lord will take your voice from you. No, the angel shut his mouth. The same way he shut the mouth of lions when Daniel was in the den. If you can have nightmares and demons choke you a little bit and you say, ah, I don't have my voice, my voice is gone, and you shout Jesus and you wake up. That's more power. <laughs> the angels of God carry the power of God. Serious. Seriously. An angel had the ability to take the voice of a man of God and to take his voice and make him not speak until the child is born. Not because God said so, but because he decided. That also shows you a glimpse into their ranking as angels. And yet it's sad, uh, you know, in Christianity, it, mm -hmm. is, it has been portrayed that, uh, you know, new you age. can't even assess the angels. No, you can't, because it's new age. Yeah. Yet new ages are just uh, inspired by your Bible. Yeah. that they're invoking demons, calling them angels, yet you have the real thing, but you don't even know how it works. You never need to invoke an angel. They're already with you. Yeah. Aren't you an heir of salvation? Yeah. You just don't know. They've been given charge over you. That is Without you even knowing. <laughs> the purpose of angels is to protect us. They are not only protectors and guides. They are protectors, but they are also guides. They are supposed to keep you. They are supposed to prevent you from dashing your foot against yes. a rock. They are supposed to keep you. They are supposed to keep you even from stumbling. And the amazing thing, Papa, what you said. So, based on your assignment, mm -hmm. specific angels are assigned to you. We are coming to all that, Apostle. It's extra deep. We are getting there. <laughs> Psalms 91 from verse 9 to 12. Mm. Psalms 91 from verse 9 to 12. Keep sharing this. Let's get those uh, like buttons high. Psalm 91 from verse 9 to 12. Psalm 9 to 12. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, uh -huh. no evil shall befall you, uh -huh. nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Uh -huh. For he shall give his angels charge over Stop you. Stop right there. Do you know why you survived COVID? No, you didn't hear it. Yes. Do you know why you survived COVID? Do you think it's the vaccine? <laughs> you think it's because you are wearing a mask. I know people who are very well equipped. And they died. I know people who tried everything they could. And their health never came back. Never. Because you have made the Lord your hide. When you say, Father, you are my refuge. You are my high tower. Do you know what the automatic response is? Angels. angels. Amen. Automatic response. Angels. Read it again, Apostle. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high, your dwelling place, uh -huh. no evil shall befall you, uh -huh. nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. Who keeps you from evil? <laughs> Keep going. 
For he shall give his angels charge over you uh -huh. to keep you in all your ways. Uh -huh. All. In everything you do, they are supposed to keep you. Keep yes. going. In their hands, they shall bear you up. They are supposed to bear you with their hands, meaning that you are not supposed to use your own effort. Keep going. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. They are not supposed to even let you like stumble, fall, mm. or, mm. or be delayed or anything like that. Because you have made the Mosai your what? Your high I tower, your tower. hiding place. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra. We, we don't even need to go there, Apostle, mm. because it goes on to tell you why you have power over serpents yes. and scorpions yes. and all that. Yes. There are people protecting you right now. Yes. You survived. You survived COVID. You think it was just... Uh, uh, no, they are keep you even from pestilence. Somebody said, who saves the evil ones? Even God still. He makes the sun to shine on, on the and the rain to fall on the, the evil yeah. and the good. They have an assignment. Yeah. Whichever the assignment is, is with God. Okay. Isn't this interesting? That's powerful. Many people survived COVID. They don't know who God sent to protect them. Wow. That's powerful. Angels come to represent God to you. Mm. Angels can appear to you. And you may think you're talking to God, but it's not God, it's an angel. Because they can represent God to you. Mm. Revelations chapter 1 from verse 1. Hmm. Papa, this is deep. I'm just trying to show you what they can do. I'm just showing you what they can do. And then I will show you what they cannot do. And then I will tell you what familiar spirits can do and what they cannot do. <laughs> Revelation 1.1, 1, 1, Apostle. Uh -huh. Now the hear this. Revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, uh -huh. things which must shortly take place. Uh -huh. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. Wait. I want everybody to hear. Apostle, start again, please. The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave him to show his servants, uh -huh. things which must shortly take place. Listen, God gave the Lord Jesus a revelation mm -hmm. of the things that must shortly come to pass. This means this is prophecy. Wow. Yes. When you say about rumors of war and this is going to happen, that is going to happen according to the book of Revelation. Guess who prophesied that? John. Mm. And John wrote it down to you. Who, who was he speaking to? Keep reading. And he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. So when you read the book of Revelation, you are confused. Why is, Job, why is John trying to worship the angel because he could not tell it was an angel. Mm -hmm. Because the angel was sent to give that revelation to John, to represent Jesus, to, to give him the message and to signify it. Mm -hmm. Meaning he was to see visions and to, and to communicate with somebody. But to him the whole time he was thinking he was speaking to the Lord. Yeah. But the whole time it was never the Lord. He sent and signified it by his angel. And the revelation was for things to come, not for his time. Yeah. Things to come. Things to come. come. So if somebody tells you, an angel cannot tell you things to come, it's a lie. Yes. It's a big time lie. Yeah. The book of Revelation, the whole book you read, it's an angel me. gave it to somebody. When you read and you say, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, I am he who holds all the seven stars. And you keep reading and when he talks, John throws himself at his feet, wants to worship him. Then the angel comes back and says, no, listen, don't worship me, worship God. I am your fellow servant. Yeah. Then John snaps out of it and he's like, is it God or is it an angel? He keeps talking to him, talking to him again. And I, John, fell on my feet to worship him. And he told me again, don't worship me. Worship God 
I am your fellow servants, even one of the brethren to your prophets. I am also bearing the testimony of Jesus, like your fellow brothers, the prophets. But the whole time, the way he's speaking to him is not speaking to him like it is an angel. He's speaking to him as if he's God. Are you getting what I'm saying? You see, these things are in plain sight. They are in plain sight, children of God. They are not hidden. They are not secret. But if it is not your assignment, you will never, ever, ever know it. Think about it. God, the Lord is telling you, be good to strangers. Some of you have entertained angels unawares. Why is God interested in you encountering angels? Because they are about their business. They are about their business. They are there to help you. Yeah. Yeah. That is encouraging you. When you see a stranger, don't have a mean face. Be nice to them. Greet people. Be good to people. Some of you have entertained angels unawares. Being a child of God, being somebody that will inherit salvation, I wish you knew how encompassed by angels you are. Yeah. You're just not aware of it. Because anything that you don't know, you have demonized or you've been taught to demonize it. Yeah. Yet it is not the truth. How many times, uh, this has happened multiple times. Uh, is Auntie Benny here? Uh, oh, she left? So there's a day that we were here. I would love for her to, to talk about this, but because of time. There's a day we drove to the church, and I wanted her to pick up something for me because we were heading somewhere. And when we got to the church, she went inside the church. There was no one here, mm. but she came to get something from my dressing room. But when she got to my dressing room, she heard me singing in church, worshiping God, literally singing. Mm. She ran out of the church to come and see if I was in the car. I'm like, Benny, where's my stuff? She says, you're, you're kidding me, right? I said, what are you talking about? I said, I promise you, I just heard you Sing. singing, worshiping in the, in the... Oh, here she is. Auntie ben oh, you are watching. <laughs> give, give a microphone. Can you explain that day? What happened? Okay, so we came. It was a Sunday Sunday night. So we came back super late, like 11 p.m. Nobody was here. Sorry, I'm not going to that. Okay. Um, and so I went upstairs to his office, grabbed what I needed to grab, came back down. <laughs> and so I go to s arm the alarm, and I hear the doors like on this other side of the sanctuary, uh, going from the lobby into the sanctuary, like shut and somebody singing in his voice. So I go to the car, kind of out of fear, but just to make sure that nobody came out of the car, <laughs> that I was still in the building by myself. And so I come to him, they're all in the car. I'm like, okay, great, so everybody's in here. All right. So then I tell him, I was like, okay, that's good. So I go back, set the alarm, but I know what I heard. I know what it sounded like, the footsteps that were going into the sanctuary. I was like, that's crazy. Like, we're not alone. And so, yeah. Amen. But here's the, but here's the thing. The, here's the thing. This happens all the time. Yes. Wow. To us, it has become normal because it's just like Peter and them. The young girl has a knock at the door. She says, Peter is at the door. She goes, they, they go inside and say, uh, she says, uh, Peter is here. They say, no, that's not Peter. That's Peter's angel. What was so familiar to them concerning this that they could just say it like it's not a big deal. No, nah, no, nah, that's Peter's angel. Wow. It means everywhere Peter was, there was another Peter that would show up. Wow. <laughs> wow. By no means this makes anybody special. Yeah. This is just God's grace. Yeah. Because of time, let me rush through this. So angels can tell you what is to come. They can because they are ministers of God. They are sent by God. It's not you doing anything. They are coming to tell you. Right? Mary, you don't need to read about this, but I will give you a little explanation. Mary 
is minding her own business. Gabriel appears, says, ah, Mary, you are favored by God. You found grace with God. You shall have a child and you shall have, you give birth to him. He shall be the savior of the world. You know how he tells him. Mary says, how will I know this to come to pass? I've never been with a man. The angel of the Lord says, don't worry, Mary. For the, angel, for, the, for the spirit of the Lord will overshadow you and you shall be with child. You also see that Mary was also told that Elizabeth, her cousin, was also so pregnant. pregnant. So for her to see what was going on, she left to go and see what is happening in Elizabeth's house. Mm -hmm. And when she gets there, the child leaps and Elizabeth begins to speak prophetically, but Mary already knew that her cousin also was pregnant. pregnant. How did she know this insight? Somebody told her. Told her what is happening somewhere else. Are you getting what I'm saying? The angel appears to Mary physically, but to Joseph, Joseph sees angel Gabriel in a dream. Mm. Why does one see one in a dream and other one physically? Number one, it's the grace of God. Okay. But also, because it says Mary received grace. Mm. But number two, you can tell the walk of Mary before God. She feared God. She was a certain way. So there was a certain, uh, there was a certain uh, um, um, spiritual capac capacity that she received because of her intimacy with God. That Gabriel appearing to her was not a big deal. But Joseph, the Bible doesn't tell us about his righteousness. We just know Joseph was a really good man. But it doesn't speak of his righteousness. So their capacity differed because you would think that Joseph needs to see the angel to believe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ah, I got pregnant by the Holy Spirit. I will say, listen, unless the God himself God comes himself. to tell me, <laughs> even a dream, I'll think you manipulated me. Yeah. Ah, you cheated a hundred percent. But because it was angelic, there was a supernatural conviction that he understood that this is God. Because of the visitation. Yeah. Remember, the same angel also came to him in, his, in, in the capacity that he's in. Visited him in the dream again and told him, listen, you need to leave the country because the king is seeking to kill him. So you need to go to Egypt and you're going to stay there until I tell you when to come back. Notice who is instructing him. An angel from heaven telling him what is to come. Isn't that prophecy? Telling him, yo, there's destruction coming. Children are going to die. They are trying to kill him, so you need to go to Egypt. You're going to stay there until I come and tell you it's good to come back because these guys have died. There was no Instagram. There was no Facebook. There was no Twitter. There was no TikTok. There was no YouTube. There was no breaking news. <laughs> so Joseph wakes up, wakes his wife, tells her, listen, we got to go. They get on the donkey and they leave. So everybody wakes up in the morning, ah, where is Joseph? Where is Mary? Nobody knows where they are. Before they know it, children are being killed. But they escaped. Why? Because an angel visited. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? Yeah. When the King Herod died, when King Herod died, the same angel came back and told him, okay, now it's good to go back home. Mm -hmm. The people who are seeking him are dead. Mm. Those who are seeking his head, those who are seeking to kill him are dead. Now go back. Yeah. He got up, took his wife, they went back home. And indeed, Herod was dead. How did he know these things? It was by the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. but through his angel. You see, when people speak about the prophetic, Please, if it is not your calling, leave it alone. 
you're going to stumble people for no reason. You can talk about anything else that God has given you. And please, by all means, do. But never talk about what you don't know. It's dangerous. It is extremely dangerous. Angels also come to make God's words to us clear. To give us clarity on what God is saying. Everything I will tell you before the Lord as he lives, I will show it to you in scripture. I will show it to you in scripture. A hundred percent. Angels come to give us clarity on what God has said. Let me explain to you. When God speaks to us, you have to remember, God is the unchangeable changer. He's the same. He doesn't change. If you read Hebrews, what we just read, chapter 1, I believe, it says God in time past spoke to our fathers and our prophets in various ways. God always uses various ways to communicate with us because our capacity to completely understand him has not yet fully matured. It will completely mature when we enter heaven. The only one who had the full capacity was Jesus because he is God. God doesn't speak English. God doesn't speak Hebrew. God doesn't speak any of our languages. He knows them all because he created them. He doesn't speak them because God is spirit and he's an unchangeable spirit. God doesn't change. Angels can speak any language because they are messengers. So they are supposed to be effective in communication. Whether you're Chinese, whether you're you're Hindu, whether you're whatever, whatever your language is, Urdu or whatever, I don't think it's Hindu, it's Urdu, right? Or or Hindi, Hindi, there we go. Hindi. My mom grew up watching a lot of Indian movies. I watched a bunch of them too. So whatever, whatever it is, they are supposed to be effective to communicate with you because that is their duty. Those who heard God, what did they say? His voice sounded like many waters, like lightning and this and this and this. This is why many of you perceive God in your heart. Mm. I feel like God is saying we should do this. I feel like God is saying we should do that. I feel like God is directing us this way. I, 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 I feel a leading to do this. I feel a push to do this. Notice all this is in the realm of perception, but you cannot give it word for word. Why? Because you are perceiving what he's saying. If you read the book of Job, God speaks once or twice, but man perceiveth it not. So our issue is not that we can't hear God per se. It is our perceiving of God is not there. Are you getting what I'm saying? That is the issue. That is the primary issue, our ability to perceive God. There are times that God has spoken to me and I did not completely understand. I understood some things and I did not completely understand other things. And in prayer, the angel of the Lord will come and tell me, this is what God was saying. Then I'll be like, okay, this is what I was missing. This is what I didn't understand. I will show it to you in scripture. It's not anything new. It brings the clarity. Daniel chapter 10, from verse 12. Amen. You then have it? he said to me, mm-hmm. do not fear, Daniel, mm-hmm. for from the first day that you set your heart to understand, and to humble yourself before your God. Mm -hmm. Your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. I have come because of your words. Notice, he was talking to God, but the angel is coming because of his words. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Keep reading. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which stood me 21 Mm -hmm. days, Mm -hmm. and behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. Notice ranking. Michael is a chief prince, one of them, Mm -hmm. meaning there are many. Keep going. For I had been left alone there with the kings of Persia. Mm -hmm. 
Now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people Ooh, in the latter days. I will come and make you what? Understand, understand it. Because when God spoke, Daniel didn't fully understand. So Gabriel came to make him understand because this was a prophecy that the fathers were given. So Daniel is fasting and not understanding. Why are we still here? Mm. What's going on? How are we going to return? How, what is going to be the outcome? Yes. He said, but I have come to what? Make you understand what will happen to your people. Who is the one who said what will happen to their people? God. God. Guys, this is in your Bible. It's there. I will make you understand what will happen to your people. Yes. Can you read it in King James, please? Sir. The same verse. What are you on verse what? Uh, verse 13. Verse 13. Can you read verse 13, please? Yes. 14, actually. Uh, verse 14. Uh-huh. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thy people in the latter days. He's For giving him information concerning the future. Mm -hmm. To make him understand it. Meaning the information was already present. Yeah. The understanding wasn't there. Yeah. That's why Daniel was fasting. Keep reading. For yet the vision is for many days. The vision is still to come in the future. Mm -hmm. How does he know about what is to come in the future? Keep going. And when he had spoken such words unto me, I set my face toward the ground, and mm -hmm. I became dumb. Mm -hmm. And behold, one like the similitude of the sons of men touched my lips. Then I opened my mouth and spake and said unto him that Notice, stood... Notice, another one that looked like a human touched his lips, mm -hmm. and he got strong. <laughs> and he was able to speak because the presence was too much. Even him speaking became difficult. Mm -hmm. Keep reading. And said unto him that stood before me, uh -huh. O my Lord, by the vision my sorrows are turned upon me, and I have retained no strength. Notice he said, because of the visions I saw, my sorrows have become too much, and I don't even have strength in me. Mm -hmm. Remember, he came, the guy came to make him understand something. Mm -hmm. But the presence was too much. He had his face on the ground, bowing before the angel, saying, my, my, my strength is not with me. Mm -hmm. Because of what I've seen, the sorrow is too much. Keep reading. For how can the servant of this, my Lord, talk with this, my Lord? Notice, Daniel, a mighty prophet, esteemed by God, he's referring to an angel, my Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is Gabriel is talking about. Mm -hmm. You see, people who have never met angels, they talk about things they don't understand. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you the truth. As the Lord lives, an angel appears to you, you will bow. Ah, <laughs> it is the most overwhelming experience you have ever felt. Seeing the Lord Jesus is a whole other level. That's a whole, that one cannot even be put on a map. Mm. But seeing an angel, the fear of God will enter you. The humility, you will call him my Lord. Remember, the Lord is with a small L, not a capital L. Because a Lord is somebody that is in charge or, or, or directing you or leading you in that moment. That is why we say the Lord Jesus is our Lord and Savior, meaning he's, mm. he's not just instructing us, but he also saved us. Yeah. Mm. Keep reading. For as for me, straightway there remain no strength in me, mm -hmm. neither is there breath left in me. Mm -hmm. Then there came again and touched me one like the appearance of a man. Mm -hmm. And he strengthened me and said, O man greatly beloved, fear not, peace be unto thee, be strong, yea, be strong. Mm -hmm. And when he had spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, let no, my Notice Lord. this, angels have the power to strengthen you mm -hmm. by their words. Amen. He said, he touched me and said, be strong, be strong. And after he spoke, I was strengthened. Something came over him, he received energy. The angels did the same thing to the Lord Jesus. Luke 22, 43. You don't understand these heavenly beings. 
<laughs> hey, Lord. Mm. In 43? Yeah. I, I want Apostle to read. Luke 22, 43. Let Apostle read. I love his narrating kind of voice. <laughs> Luke 22, 43. 43. Uh -huh. uh, let's see. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven. Can you read from the verse previous before the verse before that, Apostle? Saying, Father, if it is your will, take this cup away from me. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be done. Mm -hmm. Then an angel appeared to him from heaven, strengthening him. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly. Notice. Jesus was so burdened by what was to come. Yeah. But an angel came and strengthened him. Mm. Amen. Not the spirit of God. Mm. That's good. Mm -hmm. Is it the spirit of God? Yes. Yeah. Right. But an angel is being used to communicate the ability to strengthen him. Amen. No different than me, I can stand and say, the Lord said to me, and you say, wow, you go home, you say, man, the Lord spoke to me mightily in Revelation Church. Mm -hmm. Not because Jesus was presently here. Mm -hmm. His prophet was here and he spoke to you, but you know it is not me speaking. Right. Mm -hmm. are, are you getting what I'm trying to tell yeah. you? If the Lord Jesus can receive strength from an angel, Meaning you can pray, Father, today is one of those days. I don't feel like I have strength in me. Father, strengthen me. Strengthen me today. But in your mind, you already know an angel will come from heaven who will strengthen me. And it's not even wrong to say, Lord, my God, strengthen me today by sending your angel. Nothing wrong with that. It's not unbiblical. We don't pray to angels. We don't. But we have too much superstition that we are missing out. Missing out. <laughs> the opening of truth. There are so many things that you... Guys... You know, I have seen men of God preach. And an angel will come from heaven, stand by them, and pour oil on their head. And the preacher starts going into mysteries. And then the moment the oil stops, the man of God does not understand how he got into those depths. And he will say, that preaching today, I don't even know how. I, I didn't even study or whatever. They don't know what happened. Today, the miracles were just crazy in church. I, I, wow, the power of God, the Holy Spirit was just moving. The Holy Spirit is always present. You don't even need to invite him. He's omnipresent. Where can I run from your spirit? Yeah. Where can I hide from your presence? Even yeah. if you make your bed in hell, I am there also. So what makes us experience the presence? What makes us experience the power of God moving in a place? Are you getting what I'm saying? But all this is because you don't understand scripture. Yeah. Know the power of God. Wow. That is the issue we have. Now, I think that's basic stuff I can touch on. There are more things, but because of time. Because of time, let me go into what angels don't know and what they can't do. You cannot use an angel. Angels work with you. If you want to know somebody has a familiar spirit, they use that spirit. Oh. Angels cannot be used. They come to assist you in the mission of God. If it has nothing to do with God, they will never be involved. Uh, 
Anyone says, yeah, I just use my angels. You know that's an occultic term. Because you can't use angels. They work with us for the sake of the kingdom of God. I don't know if this is making sense. Anyone who says that they use angels, just know it's the wrong spirit. Angels are not used. Because to use also means to take advantage of. You can't. Doesn't work like that. Never works like that. Are you hearing me? Angels don't know everything. And I'll prove it to you in scripture. I will show you a mighty angel in heaven and doesn't know what is happening in heaven. There are secret things in heaven that he doesn't even know. So if an angel can be in heaven and not know things, you think a familiar spirit knows you. Doesn't the Bible say only God knows the hearts of men? Nobody knows the hearts of men except God. Evil ones can predict your heart by what you are into. They can influence you to have a negative heart. But not because they know your hearts. And I will go into that in a second, in one second. But let me show you that angels don't know everything. And it will be a shame for you to think familiar spirits know everything. Hmm. That's foolish. <laughs> oh Lord Jesus. Ah, go to Revelations. Revelations chapter 5 from verse 1. And I saw the right hand of him who sat on the throne. Mm hmm. A scroll written inside and on the back, mm -hmm. sealed with seven seals. So he saw the one who sits on the throne holding a scroll yes. bound with seals. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, mm -hmm. who is worthy to open the scroll and to lose its seals. Mm -hmm. And no one in heaven or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Mm -hmm. So I wept much. Notice this. An angel is seeing God sitting on the throne mm. with a scroll with seals, seven of them. Nobody knowing what is inside. Only the one who is holding it. Mm -hmm. The angel sees this and he declares, who is worthy to open this the scroll? scroll. And to lose his seal. And to lose his seal to see what is inside. Because he doesn't know what is in the scroll. Then the Bible says no one was found in heaven. No one was found on earth. And no one was found under the earth. Mm -hmm. One day I will speak about under the earth. We are not going to talk about today. But no one was found under the earth. No one was found where? Under, Under the, earth. the earth. Keep reading. So I wept much uh -huh. because no one was found worthy to open and read. No one was found. No one. No one means what? No, no one. one. No one means what? No, no one. one. Not maybe some people. No one no. means what? No, no one. one. Keep reading. No one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or to take or to look at it. Mm -hmm. But one of the elders said but to me. But one of the elders, one of the 24 elders left his place, came to him. What did he say? Do not weep. Do not weep. Behold. Behold. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Uh-huh. The root of David. Uh-huh. Has prevailed to open the scroll and to lose its seven seals. Uh-huh. And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne, and of the four living creatures, uh -huh. and in the midst of the elders, uh -huh. stood a lamb. 
as though he Notice, had Notice, until the elder came from a high place, mm -hmm. he had no capacity to see beyond the mighty angel he encountered. There are things you will never ever know until you meet somebody that is in a place you have never been. And this is the era. And this is the era of the church. This is our era right now. This is the issue right now. An elder, one of the 24, leaves his place, goes to John, tells him, John, don't cry. There is one that is found. While they are wondering who is, who is going to be found, there is no one. He's crying because he's saying, we are going to miss out on what God has for us. Mm -hmm. The angel is looking, no one can be found. Mm -hmm. He's looking, no one can be found. So he's broken and crying. Yeah. An elder comes, not an angel. An elder comes. Meaning there is a council in heaven that holds secrets mm -hmm. that even angels don't know. And if the mighty angel could see the scroll, mm -hmm. then there are angels who cannot even see the mighty angel or what the mighty angel can see. Because until the elder came from his place, then the eyes of John were opened to see not only the throne who was sitting on it, but to see in the midst of the throne, the yeah. whole time there was a lamb that already opened the seal. Yeah. So what they were thinking was secret was secret to them, but not secret to those who are in high places. Are you getting what I'm saying? Don't talk about what is not yours. Please don't. It's not for you. If the prophetic wasn't given to you, and even if you're a prophet, you need to recognize what kind of prophet am I. You need to know. That is why Elijah, let me, let me show you an example. Elijah goes before God, and God asks him, Elijah, what are you doing here? He said, I am the only prophet that is left. Mm -hmm. Now, a lot of people call Elijah a liar because there were other prophets being fed in a cave somewhere. But notice God did not say you lied. Men called the sons of the prophets prophets. But as far as God was concerned, he never called them prophets. They were still learning. Not only were they learning, they didn't have the spirit of prophecy. Wow. Their fathers were prophets. So Elijah saying, I am the only prophet that is left. He wasn't lying, it was true. God never reprimanded him. In fact, God told him, Go and find Elisha in this location. Anoint him to be a prophet. He will finish what you started. Why didn't God go and pick one of the sons of the prophet? Why did God agree with his servant that there is no other prophet? So God is showing him who to nominate to take after him being a prophet. Guys, even if you are a prophet, understand your place. Know your place. We are not the same. We are not the same. There are prophets that I revere more than myself. That I look up to and I say, mm, that one is. Mm. Mm. And there are prophets I know. And they come to me, many of them. Some pastors send their prophets in their church to come and be trained here. Yeah. If it's not given to you, it's fine. One day, God will lift you also. Are you getting what I'm saying? What I'm trying to explain to you is something very simple. If you want to know somebody that is not sent by the Lord, it's very simple. They will never lead you to Christ. Satan doesn't cast out Satan. A satanist cannot stand and say, in the mighty name of Jesus, every demonic power and clean spirit come out in Jesus' name and demons start falling. You say that is... Uh, Satan doesn't fight against Satan. Where did you guys get that? Even the Lord Jesus refutes that doctrine. Yeah. 
Even the Lord Jesus refutes that doctrine. He tells you Satan does not, if you say I cast out devils by the bells of then whom do your sons cast them by, out by? A kingdom divided amongst itself shall not stand. Even Satan is not divided amongst himself. Now you may not like the methods of other people, and maybe there's one of things or two they do that is not right, and maybe I do some things that are not right. Maybe. Does that qualify for force? Then everyone is forced because everybody's still maturing and growing. Yeah. Wow. Declaring what is to come is prophetic. To say, oh, it's going to rain on Wednesday is prophetic. To say what time, for how long, is a prophet. Go to Psalm 35. I'll finish with this. Psalm 35. Psalm 35 from verse 1 to 7. Psalm 35 verse 1. Plead my cause, O Lord, mm -hmm. with them that strive with me. Fight against them that fight against me. Mm -hmm. Take hold of shield and buckler and stand up for mine help. Draw out also the spear and stop the way against them that persecute me. Mm -hmm. Say unto my soul, I mm -hmm. am thy salvation. Mm -hmm. Let them be confounded and put to shame that seek after my soul. Let them be turned back and brought to confusion that devise my hurt. Mm -hmm. Let them be as chaff before the wind and let the angel of the Lord chase them. Mm -hmm. Let their way be dark and slippery, mm -hmm. and let the angel of the Lord persecute them. For without cause have they hid for me. Uh -uh. So when God is, when you're saying, uh, fire of the Holy Spirit, uh, fire, who is who's grabbing swords and shields, chasing your enemies? The angels of God. Uh. But you see, these guys were so aware that in their prayer, they're saying, Lord, look at what the enemies have done to me. Let your angels go after them. Let them make their way slippery. May they chastise them. May they destroy them. Let your angels do this in your name. Look at what they have attacked. Notice, but today if you pray like that in church, ah, everything is witchcraft that people don't understand. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's a reason why these men and women that walk in darkness, they want to walk with a familiar spirit. Because they know you're supposed to walk with an angel. Wow. Remember, it's a copy-paste. They are trying to be like what we are in God. To appear like somebody else. <laughs> Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> it's hilarious. You love it. It reminded me of the Karashika movies. You remember those old yeah, ones? Yeah. Ah, that used to scare us when we were kids. I was extra <laughs> evil. It's a similar kind of story, but it's more like geared, like young ministers who are hungry oh, okay. to be just popular because of money, mm -hmm. not because they have a, a mandate of, of souls. Of souls. And when you double with this demonic stuff, what happens is it costs you. Yeah. It costs you. It costs you a life. It costs you a family. It costs you a lot of things. It demands a sacrifice. Ah, uh, it demands crazy things. I don't know how many people we have prayed for to help them out of these things. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, in short, what I want to tell you is this. Let's finish. Let me finish with this. Let us be people that are humble in the presence of God. Amen. And we have to understand that we have a mandate from the Lord mm. to help his people. Amen. Some of these things are being done from good motives. Mm. But it's not with proper research or understanding. Lack of knowledge. So people are acting out of 
whether it's my clip or another person's clip or whatever. I mean, if wizards and witches are truly taking over the church, then where's the Holy Spirit? I mean, where is God? Are we the protectors of the church or is it God? Yes, we are supposed to sound the alarm with certain things to bring people to prayer, to bring people to this, but we are not protectors of the church. The Holy Spirit is. He's the one who keeps his bride. We don't. We just have a task to do in the presence of God. And whatever that task is for you, do it with fear and trembling. Amen. The Bible says it clearly. The gates of hell shall not shall prevail. Not prevail. If somebody is making you feel like I am, sh listen, I know false people myself. Mm. I don't see the use of saying anything. Mm -hmm. The reason why I don't see the use of saying anything mm -hmm. is because what is of man dies. Yeah. What is of God, you can do nothing about it. Amen. By my effective preaching and presentation of Christ, yes. people will know what is of him and what is not. Yeah. Yeah. It's really that simple. By our presentation of the Lord Jesus. Amen. By that presentation. Mm -hmm. Some people only can hear God from dreams. We thank God for you. That's where God has graced you. Some people only hear God in their heart when they are worshipping. They feel like a word dropped in them. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Yeah. That is what God has given you. Some of us who can see, can hear, can dream, can can see visions and visions of the night, closed vision, open vision. That's also what God has given us. If you are not in these things, leave it alone. Yeah. Leave it alone. There are so many people to save. There are so many lives to change for the Lord Jesus. That is our purpose. That is our purpose here. Let us return to what matters. Let us return to what matters. Angels are your friends. Amen. They are. They are ministering spirits sent to minister to us. Mm. We engage with God and they minister to us. That's how it works. Amen. The point is, mm. understand, God speaks to us. He ministers to us. And God does not change. I hope this helps you and it's informed you. There's many other things I can't talk about. Very powerful. But I hope this is enough and it, and it took some time. We've been here for three, I've been teaching for three hours. Yeah. But yeah. I hope it is helpful. Very powerful, Papa. I hope that it makes you grow. Amen. And go back in your scriptures, look at notes, go through notes and you'll see yourself. Amen. And if you want, if you don't want to see, you also will not see it. The reality is there are people who don't want to see and that's fine. You don't need it for salvation, so you don't have to see it. And there are people who want to know the truth. Amen. If you have a pure heart, it is right there plain. Yeah. If you want to derive what you want to derive, you also do it. But the goal is to grow so that we can be effective for the kingdom of God. Amen. That is the point. Amen. 